The Morning Show from your local news leader. It's time for Friday Flicks, the cinematic equivalent of a lump of coal and an adaption of a scandalous novel are available for you to watch this weekend. And so one of these films you might have seen on the morning show earlier this week. <laughs> so here to review Violet Night and Lady Chatterley's Lover is our film critic Chuck Oplinski. Chuck, we've got to start with Violet we Night. We have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if you uh, still believe in Santa Claus watching Violet Night, it may change your mind. Because this is not a Santa you really want to believe in. And there's David Harbour. And yes, great interview with him that Pam and I had. What a lovely guy. I wish it could have been in person. He was in Budapest shooting a film and took, a chance, or took some time to talk about this. And there he's in Santa and Santa, his Santa is very disillusioned. He's, you know, the kids don't want the right things anymore and they just want more and more and more. And eh, he's a little bummed on his annual Christmas visit. And here we see a compound where a bunch of one percenters live. And these people are so rich that apparently it is rumored that they have millions of dollars in cash stashed in a vault in the basement. Well, of course, when that gets out, you have, of course, bands of mercenaries who stop by to rip off the cash, led by John Leguizamo, who apparently, I didn't think he would need a paycheck, but apparently he did to star in this turd of a film. Uh, as they are there, well, Santa Cad manages to pay a visit while this is all going on. He likes his cookies and milk. Uh, but. Well, he doesn't like to be assaulted, and that occurs well, while he's doing his thing, and, well, he goes on the rampage. One of the things about this movie that bothered me, and there were a lot of things about this movie that bothered me, was that they didn't stop and really delve into a lot of things. There's a scene, a real quick scene, in which we see a flashback in which Santa was apparently some middle, a, middle you know, some warrior back in the 1200s. <laughs> alive for a while, right? right. And then, but we never get another reference to that as to who he really was, what was up with him, how he became Santa Claus, but apparently we get this one little scene to let us know that he's got the skills to go on the rampage and impale people on icicles. Uh, my favorite scene is when he puts a, a, an electric uh, Christmas ornament in somebody's eye, oh. turns it on, and his head sets on fire. So, you know, <laughs> it's the Christmas season, and this is exactly what you want to see. Oh, yeah, ice pick through the cheek. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I watch this movie. These are the types of movies and I'm serious about this. I'm not being funny at this point. These are the types of movies that depress me. Yeah, oh, I hear Because I'm wondering, who is this for? Right. What's the message here? Good. How many millions of dollars did you spend on this? This is supposed to be entertainment? I don't get it. Maybe I'm old. <laughs> oh, I am old. But maybe that's part of it. And I, this is a sensibility that I don't get, I don't appreciate, and frankly, it bothers me. So, silent, uh, Violent Night skip it at all costs please i want this thing to not do well so we don't have to sit through other garbage like this of course though we will get more garbage like this you know it's not going to hit home for many people when it's something as beloved as christmas and right. santa claus so yeah. all right let's move on to the scandalous novel chatterley's love lady chatterley's lover yes this is a novel that when it came out uh it was banned in many countries including england uh where it was the author lived dh lawrence now you'll notice that we don't have the usual clips here we don't have the usual clips here i sent in still pictures because the preview from netflix Whew, it's pretty scandalous <laughs> as well. Okay. Here we see Emma Corrin, and you would know her if you watched The Crown on Netflix. She played there Princess Diana. Diana. She is Connie, Miss Charlie, and there is Oliver. Oliver is the gameskeeper on her husband's estate, and her husband has come back from World War I wounded. Not everything's working for him, and so, well, Connie gets a little bored, and before you know it, she's spending a lot of time, I mean a lot of time, at the gardener's place, and before you know it, things start uh, things start heating up. Uh, the sex in the film is, as I say, they pull no punches. So this is not one that you watch with the kids around. I like this film. Uh, it's beautiful to look at, and the passion between these two is obvious. But it's not just about the sex. It's about trying to find who you are and trying to find the courage to live the life that you want to live. This woman is trapped, uh, not only by a, a marriage that is loveless, but also by societal constraints that say, you can't do this, you can't do that. It's not a, a new story. This is a story that we've heard many times. There are many Victorian novels and post-Victorian novels that deal with this. But the passion between uh, Corin and O'Connell is quite good, but also they're vulnerable. You understand why they're doing this. It's not just about the sex. It's about finding someone you can live with, finding some happiness. And that's, I think, a message that rings true with all of us. Again, don't have the kids in the house with this one on, but it is a very uh, compassionate uh, sincere film, and I liked it. It's on Netflix. Uh, it'll warm me up over this cold weekend. In comparison to the other. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right.
And do we have a third <coughs> thing in store? Uh, well, not really a third thing, not a third movie, but yesterday, the uh, trailer for the fifth Indiana Jones film dropped yesterday. Ooh, it is a teaser. It's only about a minute and a half, it's but it gives side. us more than enough information as to what's going to happen. And the one thing that has me intrigued is that this takes place in the 1960s, uh, so that uh, Indy is playing his age there. There we see him as a crusty professor. <laughs> they do do some, they did said, do some de-aging effects, though. There are some sequences like right here that take place in World War II. Uh, so there's a flashback involved. But most of this takes place in the 60s, it, it appears. Uh, and I know that it has to do with the space program and former Nazis that ran the space program. A bunch of fun. June 30th, mark your calendars. Here we go. Summertime. We're excited. <laughs> yep. All right, thanks so much, Chuck. Yep.